Good morning. I'm Captain Corbella. This is my last stand. You see that sign right there? You see NM CB28? I built that sign. I built that battalion. When I was this tall, and I am this tall, I was in that battalion. I marched, I marched every day to get where I'm at. I fixed and I repaired. Can do. The things that you're about to see in this little video, in this clip, is very serious. Take it serious. No man left behind. If they're left at that corner, what do you think they're gonna happen to them? They're gonna die. Go get them, wagon wheel. Always go back and get them. Leave no man behind. I'm Captain Corbella, and I'm giving you a direct order. Master Chief, get this thing going! This has all the efforts on extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attacks. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. The government will hunt down those responsible. Terrorism means striking terror in the hearts of people that has been accomplished. Looking in awe, amazement, shock, and grief, and anger at what they were seeing in front of them. Uh, a billion of smoke rising. Good Lord. There was a cascade. There are no words. And we see this extraordinarily and frightening scene behind us. This is just a horrific scene and a there horrific There are times moment. in our lives that are just life that. changing. Where your life could never be the same and this appears certainly to be ever one seen. of them.
I'm old and I joined up for this shit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. I don't have much coffee and I'm almost out of cigarettes. I was trying to take this weapon apart that day and ah, oh, fuck, I'm too old to do that. Ah, I should have done this when I was 20 years old, but here I am. And what I want to say to all you guys here is, don't get your balls all in a rack because you're hit one die rack. It's going to be okay. I'm pity I was a crawl. Later. Get ready to go. We're going to go. We got a lot of guys on the plane that's never been. I'm the commander and I'm taking them there. I'm going to bring everybody back. No alcohol, two bears if you get one. Don't leave anybody behind. Cut to the end. Yeah! That's the chief, front and center. That is all. Turn that camera off. We don't need that. We're getting this. We're getting this sauna or the whirlpool sent to us over there. Nine hundred bucks. It's fifty bucks hey. per person. So we'll have a little hot tub. <laughs> I'll see, I'll see, I'll see, I'll, I'll see I'm in Germany, I'll see what all these nope. little old chickens right here and I'll say, I'll say, boy, I'll, I'll say we gotta get on the plane there, chicken. Cause Mr. I'll say Mr. Rooster there, I'll say we wanna get on the plane. Now we go city sound. Now I'm telling you, critter, we've gotta get on this plane and stop them messing around here. It's cold out right here. Yeah. Come on, Barman! Oh, it's the rabbit! Are these no. your camels for sale, sir? I don't know. These camels are not for sale. They're still small, and I don't know what I'm going to do right now. But right now, when they get a little bigger, I will sell them for you. But I tell you what, I get a special present to American. And uh, I say, I'm not going to make but probably $1 profit, but that's good for me. You buy two camels. I don't make no money, but send your friend. I will sell all the camels for you, my, my son. He got a herd of camel for me. Come to grocery store, I sell you anything you want. This right for me, Muhammad Ali Tattoo. Well, I tell you, we left our heroes. They were located in the desert. 
Rocket and Squirrel and Bullwinkle. And Warrants and Natasha. Bullwinkle. How do you think? Uh, I don't know, Rocket. How about this? No, Bullwinkle. Well, last time we left our heroes, Natasha was trying to get Bullwinkle to go down the desert. Stupid Squirrel. He won't say nothing. He's pathetic. But um, I like being on. I like being on on the on the on the, on the camera. You know, everything like that. We're having a real real good time here in the desert. And I've got my my other clothes on. Hey, Gigan, stop this crap and pick up the garbage. <laughs> yes, sir. No, that guy there. He was he was one of our officers, and he's always hollering at us. When we we like being hollered at at least two or three times a day. It makes the day go by real real quick. And right now. Probably up to about three hollering so far, and we're wishing for more. So we're gonna keep on doing stupid things to get more Gigan, people to holler at us. I ain't gonna tell you again. That's three Shut times. Shut the hell up. <laughs> That's three times. One more, and then we'll be perfect for our quarter today. I'm with the Roving Reporter here in Kuwait City. Now I'll turn it over to. All right. We're walking somewhere on base to this place called the Rock, uh, and we're a little bit apprehensive about it. Yeah, because so we're like walking outside the front gate. <laughs> you sure this is a good idea? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, having a little gumption is good for you. All right. You're in the military now. That's right. Okay. It's a, but like the enemy could be like out here somewhere, right? No. No? Well, yes. Yes and no. You should Damn have that, that mentality, but you are safe here. But we don't have any bullets. We don't need them. Third Country Nationals are held loading the uh, 463 L pallets with all these sea bags. And, uh, as soon as we get through here, we'll go out to the landing strip and go. We'll strap these down with cargo nets and we'll be on our way to outside. Commander Craig Sharton. I'm the commanding officer of NMCB-28. I'd like to welcome you to Al-Assad, Iraq and uh, introduce you to the battalion. First, a little history on myself. I uh, am a direct commission officer, no prior enlisted or other military service, so uh, this has been kind of my first rodeo. Uh, I originally was uh, lived in Denver, Colorado and uh, joined Support Unit 2 down at Fort Carson. I was their dead OIC and equipment maintenance officer and also equipment officer. Then I transferred to NMCB 15 out of Belton, Missouri, a suburb of Kansas City. I was their Alpha Company Commander, uh, System Training Officer, and Training Officer. After that, I went to the 9th NCR, 9th Naval Construction Regiment down in Fort Worth, Texas. I was their uh, Equipment Officer as well, the R-43, and went back to NMCB 15, their Operations Officer, S-3. And then after a successful tour there, went back to the 9th NCR in Fort Worth, 
uh, was their assistant operations officer and also their chief staff officer. After that, I came to NMCB 28, had a change of command in uh, October of 2005. Uh, during FY06, we went to the field exercise at Fort Hunter Liggett, California, which uh, was a very good exercise and uh, got us prepared for uh, mobilization and, and ultimately deployment. So that's how we got here. Uh, currently, our force laydown, we've got uh, 100 people at uh, Task Force Sierra, which is spread out. That's our Charlie company, uh, headed by Lieutenant Don Robbins. Uh, they're spread out between uh, Biop, Baghdad International Airport, uh, Balad, and also Bagram Air Force Base in uh, Afghanistan. Our Delta company, headed by Lieutenant Ivan Cavanaugh, is in Fallujah. That's approximately 100 people as well, uh, to include our pile driver uh, convoy security element. And uh, the remainder of the force is here at Al Assad, uh, also to include our dozer convoy security element. So, anyway, uh, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the uh, key members of our staff. Good afternoon, my name is Lieutenant Brendan Herring. I'm the Weapons and Ordnance Officer for Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 28. I also help in the Unit Movement Control Center with the Air Movement. I'm an Air Force Officer, been in the Air Force coming up on two years. I've been with the battalion about five months. My job here in the Armory is to make sure that the battalion, and especially the combat security elements, are prepared and ready to go with all the weaponry and ordnance they need to carry out their mission and also whenever we send groups out on projects that they're prepared to handle whatever threats may emerge. So uh, come on in and we'll go ahead and show you around the armory and introduce you to the folks that work here and show you a little bit about what we do. This is the inside of the armory. This is where it all goes down. As you can see over here we've got connex boxes where we store weapons for the convoy security elements. More storage over here. Back behind you we've got the uh, ammunition storage point where we keep all of our explosives. Over here we've got people uh, using the Army to clean their weapons, which is an essential function when in a desert environment such as Iraq. So uh, we encourage people to spend as much time as they can in there. Is that carbon? Carbon! This carbon right there! I told you to get it out! Get the carbon out! And my very aggressive staff making sure that people do a good job of cleaning their weapons every time they shoot and at periodic intervals to ensure readiness. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Russ Link. Uh, Bravo Company Commander. Uh, in terms of some of the stuff that we're here doing in Al-Assad, Iraq, uh, we've got a number of projects underway. Uh, one of those being these crow's nests that we're building. Uh, these are in use for RCT-2. Uh, the Marine Corps use those for various uh, entry points that they're trying to control, uh, various battle positions. These are battle tested and loved by the Marines. They're a very good thing to have. As far as myself, I've been with the Navy uh, five years, working on six. Uh, have held various positions within the battalion, but have definitely enjoyed and loved being part of Bravo Company. Outstanding group of individuals, outstanding troops, and certainly have enjoyed also being part of 28. Couldn't ask for a finer group of people. So, uh, as far as some of the efforts that we are going to attempt to accomplish during this deployment. Uh, anything that we can do to improve the, the life for the Marines, improve their defensive posture, improve their quality of life, and help them to accomplish their mission is our goal. Uh, our, our motto is to, that we can do, and Bravo Company will do. I'm here with EO1 Grozy. He's a, a member of Bravo Company, obviously an alpha rate inside Bravo Company, but uh, we're very proud to have him as part of our company and he's a big contributor. EO1 uh, comes to us from Texas. In he, Rockwell, Texas. Correct. And I'll let him tell a little bit about what he does in his civilian career, but uh, then talk a little bit about what these guys are doing back here. Uh, as far as EO1's role within the company, he is one of our uh, go-to crew leads for various projects inside and outside the wire. Okay. I'm Eo Rosie, as the lieutenant said. Um, today we're working on um, the observation tower out here for force protection at uh, Camp J. Um, using many cross-assigned rates here, we have a CM, myself and EO, and uh, a builder and a CE working on the project here today. So um, we're building the cross net or the observation tower, which is behind us. And, uh, um, we've also been building escal barriers uh, around the outside perimeter uh, to help out uh, on, on the security here at Kilmar State. Uh, here 
with uh, MM1 Hal. Petty Officer Hal is uh, one of the crew leaders over a construction project called the Crow's Nest. Uh, that's what we're going to talk to you about. Petty Officer Hal is from Louisiana. He's going to tell you a little bit about where he's at and what they're doing. Yes, I'm uh, Petty Officer Hal from uh, Mandeville, Louisiana, a little north of uh, New Orleans. And the project we're working on is called the Crow's Nest. It's a portable unit that's going to be utilized by the uh, Marine Corps on remote locations. Provides them a lot of protection from uh, incoming fire, both small arms and uh, upper range weapons. Um, the unit is uh, somewhat of a classified item, but uh, it's being constructed on site here uh, with the materials that we are uh, we have locally and it's being shipped in. The units that we're going to produce are going to be lifted to a, a vehicle, brought on site, and uh, the lieutenant can go into more of the details as far as uh, its security measures. Roger that. Yeah. Once these uh, units arrive on site, the the idea is to be a picket place, uh, security observation tower for the, the Marine Corps to use. And as MM1 said, uh, these are a classified force protection item. So this is about the extent of what we can show uh, in this video. The other pieces are obviously uh, in another location on the base. Lieutenant Sachitano, OIC, Echo Company. And today I'm coming from you to you here from Alasai. We have one of our teams based here in Alasai getting ready to take off for the evening, heading out on another mission. So far, to date, we have completed over 200 missions and over 20,000 miles. You see them come behind me here. They travel pretty heavy. They have reserve weapons. Big, big truck. We travel some of the toughest roads here in Iraq, protecting the convoys from enemy attack, attacks from IEDs. They look out, they protect some of the uh, drivers and stuff that we take along with us. All along, they're out there for the safety. Don't know where they're going now. And as they continue their missions throughout here, we want to thank the families who support them back home. Without that support, these guys wouldn't be able to concentrate and do the things that they do well here, which is protecting our convoys. sun setting behind me here. They mainly travel at night, so they spend a lot of time on the roads at night under the cover of darkness, which helps protect them and the convoy. And coming up behind us here is the convoy commander's platform. This is CMC Lucia. He has expertly well led this convoy team in all that. Ah! Now, much like the police forces back home, these guys are in charge with taking care of that convoy. They will stop any local national vehicles from moving into the convoy. It will help 
uh, block off roads, get verbal signs, signals to them. We got a call, little thing! Finally, it ends up with one of our recovery vehicles here. Basically, they are in charge of picking up any vehicle and break down along the road. They carry all kind of gear in the back. And that helps them at any time that they can uh, help get the convoy, keep the convoy moving. In closing, I'd just like to add that uh, I'm very proud of these guys. These guys have done a really a lot of hard hours, a lot of long hours on the road, a lot of hard work. So have the rest of the CBs here. Uh, we're just looking to push through, finish up this deployment, get back home safely and sound to our families. Okay.
Liberty. Eternal Father, strong to save. With thankful hearts, we celebrate the heroic sacrifice of so many who bravely face the arrows that fly by night. We pray this day for all of our brothers and sisters in arms who are injured by war, a sacrifice symbolized by the Purple Heart. We pray for their healing as well as for the comfort and peace for their families. We acknowledge and thank you for the equally brave CVs who stand together but were fortunate enough not to be wounded. They, too, are worthy and strong heroes. Thank you, God, for the courage you place in these individuals. And we thank you for your mysterious and miraculous power in sustaining their lives with death as all around. In your gracious and holy name. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. sir. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, ceremony where we're going to recognize CE2 Jason Harrison. Uh, a little bit about him. Construction electrician, second class Jason Harrison, was born on the 2nd of May, 1979, in Shreveport, Louisiana. He's the second of three children born to Candy and Jeff Harrison. He has an older brother and a younger sister. In 1998, he graduated from Northside High School, Lafayette, Louisiana. In December 1999, he enlisted in the U.S. Army as an infantryman and later transferred to radio operator. In 2003, he was deployed to Afghanistan with the 10th Mountain Division and the 3rd Special Forces Group in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. He was honorably discharged from the U.S. Army in October 2006 at the rank of sergeant. That same month, he enlisted in the Navy Reserve through the CP Vet Construction Electrician Program and affiliated with MSB 28 Detachment 08 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Officer Harrison currently works for Fugro Chance, Incorporated in Lafayette, Louisiana, as an offshore surveyor. He's married to, married to Jessica Harrison and has two daughters, Anna three and Gabriel six. And his family live in Lafayette. I, I'd just like to say that uh, I'm proud of everything this battalion has accomplished, all the hard work we've done, and uh, in, in very many different facets and fields. Uh, I'm especially proud of the convoy security teams. Uh, I think my hat off to you every day for the mission you do, and what you perform, putting yourself in harm's way. I, I thank you, and I respect you, and again, I, I can't say it enough. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that everyone's happy and healthy. I look forward to the day when we can go home. There's a night that goes by that I don't wake up in the morning and I thank God that the phone didn't ring in my room to tell me something bad happened. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to get a chance to talk with you uh, following the ceremony, but let me, let me just say that, that, uh, that I can't tell you how proud I am to participate uh, in the ceremony here today. Uh, I think for the citizen soldier, uh, your service is, uh, is what you contribute uh, to this war effort, and uh, all of you are to be congratulated for that. Uh, you know, what we're going to see here today is one of your shipmates uh, be recognized for uh, for a particular uh, day, a particular event, uh, and this ceremony is a stark reminder that freedom isn't free. You know, we have had during this conflict 14 CBs who've been killed in action and 114 CVs who have been wounded in action. As, uh, as we pen the Purple Heart on your shipmate here today, uh, have some quiet thoughts for those shipmates who also were wounded, but also for those shipmates who made the ultimate sacrifice. Construction uh, electrician Jason Harrison, center, March. At approximately 2200 on 11 March 2007, an NMCB 2818 convoy, Dozier, was attacked by an IED approximately 4.5 kilometers northwest of El Fallujah. Dozer and SAR Mobile at 35 kilometers with 25 meter dispersion on the first vehicle, an MTBR with level one armor, was attacked by an IED 10 meters from the right side of the vehicle. CD3, Jason Harrison, the gunner of vehicle one, was knocked unconscious for a short period by the blast. He regained, he regained consciousness, and after being evaluated on the scene by competent medical personnel, was cleared to continue with the mission. The team performed five and 25 meter inspections, a cordon was set, an EOD was requested. EOD determined the IED 
consisted of one 155 millimeter artillery round with an unknown initiator. Dozer was able to identify a trigger man. Please join me in a round of applause for this brave member of the old pro CDs. race you've set before us. We pray that you will continue to be our shield and our protector as we walk through the valley of the shadow of war. Gather us under the shelter of your wings and let us never be afraid of the terror that comes in the night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. We thank you for your healing presence that makes us whole once again when the enemy strikes. Continue to be our guide and guardian and bring us, all of us, to that day which will see us home. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Chaplain. This concludes the ceremony. Attention to departure of official party. Commander of troops, take charge of carry out the plan of the day.
Now we return to another episode of Damn It Man Solo! Oh, HM1, oh, I have a stomach problem. Well, what's wrong this time? I can't poop! Oh. I got just the thing for you. I need you to take these one a day for three days. Okay, they're suppositories. Take one a day and in three days, if you're not any better, come back and see me, okay? All right. This pills aren't working at all. Are you sure you're taking them the right way? Well, of course I'm taking them the right way. What am I supposed to do? Shove it up my ass? Damn it, Van Solo. Damn it, Van Solo! Hi, I'm Master Fletcher here with NMCB 20 in al Iraq. We're having our Independence Day and over the hump party. Uh, we had a barbecue with hamburgers, hot dogs, and a uh, um, 50 50 Ma draw. Master Chief, hold on. I, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, you got a 6 CB behind you there, I think. Hey, what's going on, Colbert? Oh, oh, no, go, uh, man, what the heck? Colbert, you, you go get Doc. You all right, Colbert? Colbert, are you all right? Hello and welcome to Darka Darkus Mohammed Jihad's sale of MiG-21 aircraft. We have many a MiG-21 aircraft. I have an A model, I have a B model, I even have just in MiG-25 models. And also, we have these products just in. It only wants my IED, but they still good. I give you good price on them, I promise. And these prices are insane! Okay. <laughs> and now we return to another episode of... Damn it, man, Solo! Oh, jeez. When your mom finds out, I got so drunk that I puked all over myself. Ah, he's probably gonna write me up for something. Hey, no, 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 no. Look, Ben Solo, here's, what? here's all you gotta do. You take ten dollars. You put in your shirt pocket. All right. Uh -huh. Then when Lamont confronts you when you go to work tonight, tell him some other guy got so drunk he puked all over your shirt and gave you this ten dollars to have it cleaned. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. I'll, I'll probably try it again. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Ando volando. What's going on here? Hey, man, you know, what? I was at the bar, and some guy, he just looked all over my shirt, right? He smelled. <laughs> but, but look, he gave me this $10. Just to, uh... Just he to, gave uh, you a 20 Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, he also crapped in my pants. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Damn it, Van Solo. Damn it, Van Solo. Me to get on this crazy camera. Know for what? Huh? Doc Craven, NMCB's doctor. Don't no wait for me. How about those bulls? The bulls are making headway. Oh, I'll do it. Uh, how about the rockets? Yeah, the rockets are...
And now we return to another episode of Damn It Man Solo! In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us open our hearts as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion. What happened to the communion wafers? Where's the cup? What are you doing? What? Damn it, Van Solo! Damn it, Van Solo! Hi, I'm Commander Craig Sharp with NMCB 28 in Alistair, Iraq. Master Chief Fletcher, Exo Gardner, and I would like to salute Admiral Phillips for his 32 years of distinguished service to the Navy. Salute! And you could get your goddamn head blown off. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you plan on this plank grab ass, don't 
Don't play grass as, as I did. Take your ass over there and play grab ass. Because you think of my ass will help. Stand by. I am going to be a real asshole if I catch you playing grab ass. Now listen to me. I'm not going to say this once. Not twice, not three times. Get your shit together. I'll see you later. said a bet that he's gonna uh, gonna do if you do something. A bet? No, seriously, I think you have to shave your mustache. I told you, Skip, I would love to shave my mustache, but the deal is you have to get a tennis down or S6 to shave his head to cut, to cut his hair. Well, to shave his head or just cut his just hair? Just cut it. Don't cut his hair military style like mine. Right. And I'll be glad to shave my mustache. No well, then, problem. Just like a regulation cut. I mean, that doesn't have to be. Yes, yeah, so of course, regulation that doesn't require you know his gel that he typically uses for his hair. And I love it. You know, I think you take away his moose, you take away his soul. Mm, perhaps. I don't know. We'll have to see. All right. So we're on. We're, we're on. It's a deal. All right. So okay. I'll shave his mustache. Right. Snail cuts his hair. All right. Shave his hair. <laughs> cuts his shoe as mine. Right. Got it. Maybe it's a deal. Sure. Right. Right. Hell no. <laughs> Man, they have been on me all deployment. I guess I'm finally going to have to step up. He's on. It's on. <laughs> we'll get it done. Yes, it is. Go in here and get this over with. As you can see, LT is getting his hair cut <laughs> for the bet. And here's the gentleman who's cutting the hair. Abdul. Good, right? Yeah, mine's a zero. I can stand on the side and just put a trim on top. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hardcore. If he doesn't shave his stash, that's so messed up. <laughs> hey, you might want to get on the back so you can see. I'm have to get a thicker blanket. The difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna look nice. If he doesn't shave his dad, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh, he will. He's, we got the video. We done? It's good. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough for what? A mustache. Yeah. There you go. Core values in the three. I think he's, he's fine with the courage and the commitment. I've never doubted that, but I'm questioning the honorable part right now. He's uh, finding some way to crawfish out of this uh, Snell haircut mustache deal. And I'm uh, absolutely not. <laughs> Snell came to staff call this morning with a haircut that was a sideways regulation, but he's still got that thing going on top that's out of regulation. So he needs to get that little bit more cut. An easy day, kind shave the mustache, the, no problem. The AstroTurf thing going yeah, he's on. got the AstroTurf, still, he still had the gel in it this morning. Yeah. It's, you know, he gets rid of that, he's good to go. I mean, no problem. I'll shave the mustache and, uh, you know, I'll have no mustache by the end of the week. I'm thinking he gets to get a haircut tomorrow. Do you think he can do it like, is it like jumping in a cold swimming pool? I mean, does he just do it and it's gone, or does he have to go like a quarter inch at a time? He's got to go a quarter inch at a time. He said do you think so? That's, he just can't, he, he's a little... Creep, baby into, steps. creep into the cold pool, not just dive in off the board kind of thing? It's baby steps. I don't know. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. I'll do it. We're ready to shave the mustache, though. So. I don't know. All right, let's go try this again. All right, this better work. This is going to take me a hell of a lot longer two months to grow this bag and only two weeks for that mustache. So, let's see how this works.
Shook with the skipper. I'm gonna go for it. So here we are. We're gonna go ahead and do this little piece first. We're gonna get a little half of it going. What do you think? You know, I've only seen this thing twice in my life. Smell ought to be pretty, still pretty good about this. Things I do to get people to cut their hair around here, I'll tell you, it's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he ought to feel pretty good about it. We'll see how this one goes over tomorrow, but... That ought to get a few last in one. Alright, that's part. I'll go ahead and get the rest of them. That won't take long. Here we go. Alright, here comes the rest of it. See how that one works tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, this is how you do it there, Lieutenant. Okay? You know, I know you do it right the first time. You know, I got to I'm worried about my hair kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it's only the third time I've shaved my mustache off, so... Hello? Daddy? How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Huh? Harsh Kitty! Oh, that's good. He's been coming in late at night, huh? Well, put Kitty on the phone. Kitty? I'm tired. Dad's telling me that you've been coming in late at night. What are you doing? No, I don't want to hear all that me. I don't meow, meow, meow. It's all the time. You don't want to do what I tell you. Now, I'm rolling over, and I'm not going to put up with that. Do I have to come home, Kitty? No, I don't want you to lick me in the face. I'm tired of that. You get up in the morning, you know what you do first. You lick your head and you lick your balls. I don't want you to lick me. Stop coming in at 3 o'clock in the morning, Kitty. That's all you gotta do. Dad says he sees you come through the trail and then you want to sneak in the house through the cat trap. Don't do it again. You hear me? Because if I gotta come to my rack, it's gonna be bad on you, Kitty. Last time you came home, you brought nine kittens. I can't afford to feed nine kittens. Okay. Put Dad back on the phone. No, I don't want to hear that meow, Kitty. Stop it. Just stop it! Okay, put Dad back on the phone. I love you too. And remember what I said. Dad, I gave him a good tongue lashing. He won't be coming in at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And if he does it again, just get him neutered. 
Get it? Get it taken care of. I've been promising Getty for nine years. And he don't want to act Just get in cut. All right. If you have a problem, give me a call. Bye. cover sheets on your CB on the move report? Oh, yes, sir. Sorry about that. I, I forgot. Yeah, well, we're putting cover sheets on all the CBs on the move reports. Did you see the new SOP on this? Yes, sir. I, I have the new SOP right here in my inbox. Uh, I, I just forgot, but I haven't sent one out to the 30th, so th there's no problem. Yeah. Well, if you could just make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. And uh, I'll make sure you get another copy of that SOP. Oh, no, sir, that would be right. Like I said, I've, I've got one here in my inbox. Okay, so Turn it down a little bit. But I was told by the mom that I could listen to it at a reasonable volume. Okay, but as a personal favor, you know, as a friend, could you turn it down a little bit? But, but I don't understand because uh, I told the mom that if standing could be listening to it, then I should be able to listen to it. You like that? Because that's my lunch hour. Hey, Pedro Security, what's happening? Hey, Skipper. We need to talk about your CB zone. Uh, yes, the, the cover letters. Uh, the S3's already talked to me about it, sir. Okay, because um, we're putting cover letters on them now. Yes, sir. Um, I, I understand that. I understand the procedure. I, I received the SOP, and nothing was forwarded out to the 30th, so it's not even going to be a problem. Okay, it's just uh, from now on we're putting cover letters on the CV on the move report, so if you could try to remember to do that, that'd be great. NMCB 28 COC. Spear Officer Gitcher speaking. How may I help you? Yeah. Right, yes, I have the new SOP. Hey! hey. What's up? What's up? to retire. I've been in this Navy for a long time and you guys have been doing a great job but some people have been doing a great job. Well we had a few snafus. We had phones that were taken out of the MWR. Tore up! <laughs> we don't know who did it but I want to find out who did it! You tell me who Tore these bones up. I don't have them right now. It, it looks like this. A bone. I'll give you one of my captain coins. I'm about to retire. I want to know who did it. Tell me. And I'll give you a coin. Anybody can earn this coin. This coin is very special to me and the Navy. 42 years I'm retired. I won't be back. You won't take one of these. This coin. Tell me who did it. These bones. They're put in for the MWR, not for some little old shit to tear them up. A Ted Hook, Master Chief, front here. Carry out with the plan of the day. No laughing. No laugh at me. Carry on. <laughs> 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 no 
now we return to another episode of Damn It Man Solo! Alright, Ben Solo, it looks like it's time for your prostate exam. Okay? So what I need you to do is I need you to go ahead and take this in to the doctor, give it to him, and he will tell you what you need to do. Okay? Great. Hello, doctor. Oh, come on in. That's fine. You have your record? I'll be right yes. with you. What in the world? Ben Solo, what are you doing? Well, Sir HM1 said I was due for a prostate exam. Prostate exam? Look around. Can't you see this as a dental office? Damn it, Ben Solo. Damn it, Ben Solo. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hey, Chief, how are you? Woo! Man, y'all don't put this sh Boy, y'all get shot. Oh, what's that spider? Oh, what the hell? Oh, okay, man. How can we help you today? Uh, well, I'd like to get my password reset. Is this. that right? Yeah, yeah. Sir, we got another customer. You remember your password, right? Oh. Is he next? Oh, he's next, sir. Come on. Oh, come on. What's going on here? Oh, he forgot his nipper password. Uh, what a deal. You sure? Yeah. Uh, we can't help you. I remember that. You sure? Yeah, I think so. And then tell him. shit zone guys I've been there a lot of people have been hurt right here along this route we're going to walk Michigan you Navy guys just don't get I'm a marine a gunny not gunnery a gunny you can call me gunny Pollock me gunny Pollock 
Marine, Gunny Polly. Gunny Polly, Marine. Gunny Polly. I'm not in the Navy. Gunny Polly. And, what, and, and right here, we're going up to, uh, here, right to TQ. And remember me, Gunny Polly. Oh, I'm not in the Navy. Gunny Polly. As you were, your formations need work. Gunny Polly. Marine. Good morning. Uh, my name is Doc Craven. Um, MCB 28 Doc. <laughs> oh, good morning. Uh, I'm an MCB 28 Doc. Uh, Michael Vick and. Uh, <laughs> Oh, huh. uh, Michael, who, where was I? Michael Vick uh, was, was a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, oh uh, uh, the Cowboys, uh, <laughs> Tony Romo is a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. he, he throws a... Uh, Duck! Oh, uh, uh, Tom Landry was was a good, good, good coach. He had that suit, uh, whatever. Uh, Redskins, uh, John Rickin. Good, good. Well, I've got to go and get me a nap. Knees are kind of hurting. Back. You need Tylenol. Anything, uh, let me know when I'll. <laughs> Alright, you guys ready? Yep. Hello, my name is Chief Campos, and I am the Chief Boy in the city of Tulane. And we are going to be shooting today, and I want to let you really know that this is a no shooter, <laughs> this is very dangerous. And you could get your gun and have it blown off. <laughs> I want to tell you, if you plan on this black bear don't play grass as they're here. Take your ass over there and play bear Because if you think of my ass now, That's pretty cool. stand by. I am going to be a real asshole. <laughs> now listen to me. I'm only going to say this once. Not twice, not three times. Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Hello, my name is Scrappy Doo, and I'm getting ready to get on the plane with my Uncle Scooby. And we've been having a whole bunch of Guinness Snout beer, and we're real fired up. And I tell you what, we're gonna go, and we're gonna go in the old castle. These guys are laughing at me. My name is Scrappy Doo. Da 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 da. Puppy power. Come on. No, Scrappy, no. Uncle Scooby, let's go in that old mansion and let's go get that ghost. One, two, three, four. I'll be myself. Oh, Scrappy, no, don't go in that old castle. Will you go in the old castle for one Scooby snack? No way. Two Scooby snacks? Maybe. Three Scooby snacks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, Scrappy, let's go. Me and you going to go in that castle and give me three Scooby snacks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Uncle Scooby, let's go. See you later from Ireland. This is Scrappy Doo! Da 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 da! Puppy Power! Lucky for my uncle's Scooby! Who are you? I tell you what, I'm gonna get you! One, two, three! My name is Scrappy Doo! Let me at it! Let me at it! One, two, three! I'm gonna get this old ghost! Come on, let me at it! Let me at it! My name is Scrappy Doo! Let me at it! One, two! Come on, come on! I'll get you old ghost! One, two, three! Da 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 da! Puppy Power! Because if they fuck up, I'm gonna take their ass on 
my plane. Some of them have been drinking too much alcohol. Some Chief, too many beers. Chief Campos, it's going to be okay. They don't worry. I tell you, they don't want to mess with me right now because if they mess with me right now, somebody's going to have a big problem and they're going to have a problem with me. Is this a shitter? This is a no shitter. They could get left behind and we have to turn the plane around and get them back in. And we will be late for three or four hours. You make fun of him one more time, you will never see your family again. Your family? Where is he yet? I want to know. He's back there. Come on. Don't play with me. I tell you what. My name is Gunny Pollock, and I'm not in the Navy. My name is Gunny Pollock, and I'm not in the Navy. And I tell you what. You guys, you don't know what it is to be in the Marine Corps. You can't handle the truth. My name is Gunny Pollock. <laughs> and I'm not the Navy. And I tell you what, I've been here and I've been there. You guys need to get on the plane. Stop all the bullshit. This is not the Navy. This is the Marine Corps. My name is Gunny Pollock, and you can bet on it where that line comes from. You can take it to the bank. Turn it off, Gunny. Turn it off. It's over. Hey, you. It's get over, Gunny. It's over. Get on the plane right it's now. It's over. My name is Gunny Stop. Pollock. Stop. Hey, Gunny, sorry. You're not in the infantry. You never really were. So stop. I'm a gunner's mate. Infantry. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Hollinshant from Oklahoma. And I come on this deployment and I learned a whole lot about billing. The only thing I really miss is I'm a cat lover. I had a cat. His name is Sniffles. And He's back home. Hello, Sniffles. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I might better get him on the phone. Dad? Hey! This is Barry. Where's Sniffles? He's out. How long has he been gone? Well, I told you, Dad, to give me a call. When he stays out two or three days. Where's he been? Out running. Uh, uh, that's all right. I'll take care of him. Oh, he he's coming through the door, the kitty door. Okay, put him on the phone. Sniffles! No, no, I don't want to hear that anymore. You keep on on that. No, 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 where have you been? I told Dad to tell me when you, he says you've been gone for three or four days. No, no. I'll tell you what. You won't be getting any more honey this time when I go. I'm going out to get honey and milk all the time and you know, no, no, all night long. And this is what you do for me. You go out and stay all night. You just wait till I get home. I'm going to have you neutered. No, don't keep on down. Meow, meow. Like me. You won't be getting any more meow mixed in. Meow, 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 meow. Okay, Sniffles. I've had it with you. All right. Bye. Well, sorry about that, but he gets in trouble all the time. Well, I've got to go get me a cigar, sweats or sweet. Barry Hollins had remember me, and it's been a pleasure serving with you in Iraq. Yeah, this is uh, B1 Clark. We're heading to TJ. Maybe hit the LA County Fair, taking the Mexicans with us, so we don't get in trouble. <laughs> That's how we roll. I was in Fallujah on the bridge. He was on the bridge, right? Where were you? You were in Fallujah? I was on the bridge, man. I was there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we just want everybody to know, you know, we were in Fallujah. Where were you guys? I was at Cap Cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I think they're what? We were, we were, we were stationed at the wire. They were 20 miles inside the wire, but it was still dangerous over there, don't get me wrong. You know, we heard they ran out of ice cream one time. <laughs> it was tough. Hey, welcome back to The Price is Right, everybody. So glad to have you here. Rich, who are we missing? We are missing Alan Selmer. Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Come on down, buddy. There's Alan right here. Alan, how you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Alan just got back from Iraq, everybody. How about a hand for Alan? I talked to him earlier. 
talking earlier on. Congratulations. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to Fighting CB. Uh, what, what, what's the next item up for bid, please? Drew, it's a unique bubble chair. <laughs> Alan, what do you bid for that cone chair there? $7.49. $7.49. Samantha? Um, $5.23. $5.23. Xavier? $4.62. $4.62. Sandra? One dollar, Miss Strategy, right there, doing some strategy. Actual retail price, wow, two thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars. That's you, Alan. That's you, buddy. Come here, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Alan here is uh, fighting CB. Just got back from Iraq. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, nice to have you here. Now, uh, since you're in the Navy, you could probably use some money. Definitely. Yeah, let's show him what, she, he would, let's show him what he can win there. All right, right Alan, it's a chance to win $10,000. $10,000 playing a great game called Half Off. Ta-da, there you go, Half Off. This game is so easy, Alan. Sandra, here, let me show you this game to you. There's one box in there out of that 16 boxes that has $10,000 in it. One of the, and all the rest of them have nothing. So it'd be kind of cruel to make you pick the one box, you know, out of 16 boxes. You'd hardly have a chance. But we're going to give you a chance to get rid of half the boxes at a time until there's only two boxes left. And here's how we're going to do it. Uh, Brandy and Fire are standing there by items. And we're going to show you two items at a time. You tell us which price is the half-off price. One price is the real price. The other price is the half-off price. Tell us this one, the half-off price. We give you $500 extra and get rid of half the boxes. You ready? Let's see the first two items, please. All right, Drew, making fondue is fun and easy with this durable stainless steel set. And soothe cold symptoms and dry skin with this adorable pig humidifier. All right, what do you say? The humidifier or the fondue pot has the half-off price? Can I look at my group? Can I look at it? Let's see right here. Humidifier? The humidifier. Alan says it's the humidifier. Fire, show them the good news. There you go, 500 bucks. And we're getting rid of half the boxes. Get rid of them. Say goodbye. My boxes. $500, and we got rid of those boxes. Let's see the next two items, please. Okay, Drew, this powerful ceramic straightener dries and straightens hair at the same time. And want to know how The Price is Right is produced? This behind-the-scenes book will entertain you with lots of fascinating photos and stories about America's favorite game show. By Stan Blitz. Thank you, Stan. And, uh, Ellen, which is the half-off price, the book or the hairstyle? I should have went to the store to get the book. <laughs> I'm gonna go, they're saying the book, so I'm gonna go with the book. Okay, Alan says the book. Fire, give him the good news. There you go, the book. Now you have $1,000, 500 extra dollars, and we're getting rid of half the boxes. See ya. Four boxes left. One of those four boxes has $10,000 in it. You have $1,000 cash, just because you were such a good picker on the items. Let's see the third set of items, please. Wake up the natural sounds, the radio or alarm with this all-in-one set. And feed the whole team their favorite foods using this football field-inspired slow cooker. All right, one of the items is the half-off price. Which item is that? The slow cooker. Alan says the slow cooker. Fire, you have all the half-price items over there, it seems. No! Sorry, Brandy has it. It was the sound machine, but you have $1,000. And there's only four boxes left, so you have a one out of four chance. Just tell me which box has the $10,000 in it. I'm gonna have to uh, go with my girlfriend and number six. Girlfriend says number six. Brandy's gonna go up to number six and bring it down. Hopefully that has the money. Remember, you have a thousand bucks no matter what. It got to be on prices right, and you won the uh, whatever thing you won when you came up here. Here comes Brandy. The cooker and all. Yeah, yeah, you won. Yeah, you get the cooker and all. Yeah. Well, you don't get the cooker, but you get the come on down book and the fondue, the pig thing. All right, Brandy, thanks a lot. Here we go. Come right over here. Put one hand on this side, one hand on the other side. When I say three, say Alakazam and lift up the box. Ready? One, two, three. Alakazam. No, no. What box is it, Brandy? Which box is it? Number five has the $10,000 in it. There it is, right there. Sorry, man. Welcome back, though. That's the main thing. Nice to have you on Prices Right. We'll see you next time. I'll come back. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, here we are, the big wheel, Stephanie. You are our biggest winner today. You're going to spin last. Alan, you're right in the middle, so you're going to spin second. Sandra, you just missed by one getting a car. So we're going to let you spin first. Come on over here. Come over to the wheel. And you want to come over on this side. That's where the handles are. You get two chances to spin it. 
as close as you can to a dollar without going over. You ready? Okay, go ahead and give it a big spin. There you go. Come on over here. You want to say hi to anybody? Uh, yeah, I'd like to say hi to my children, all my daughters and my grandchildren. All right, good. You don't have grandchildren. 85. Oh, 85 cents. You want to keep it? Uh, keep it. Okay, keep it. Go ahead over there. Alan, you got to be at 85 cents, man. Look, she just made the 85 cents. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Big, strong Navy CB. This will be the easiest thing you did. Let it go. Want to say hi to anybody while it's spinning? The audience for being so nice. Yeah, nobody, anybody else? And my Larry and uh, my girlfriend. Okay, good. You got to be at 85. Come over here, man. So we can see 85 cents. 65. The dime. You got to spin again because you got to be at 85 cents. One more spin. Go ahead. Try to get 75 cents or better. 75 to 90. Come over here, Alan. Everybody can see on TV. You want 75 to 90. That's what you want. Here comes, there goes 75. There comes 85. We'd be good. 65. Another dime. A double dime. All right. Rare, but not a winner. That's, that's pretty good, but it's not a winner. Stephanie, come here.